Hey, Greg, thanks for taking the time. Um, thanks, Jeff. Just uh, what was the, the method tonight? What were you trying to see from, from uh, you know, a young lineup? There were some trialists in there. Um, what was the, the overall goal for, for tonight's match? Yeah, I think, you know, in, in these types of situations, one, again, seeing what, what each of these guys is picking up in terms of what we're trying to do and understanding their roles within the collective group. And then you're assessing individuals, but also the collective uh, in terms of how people are fulfilling responsibilities and, and who's ready for the big games and, and, and who's understanding, again, the direction we're going. Also assessing myself in terms of how much you know, I'm giving them that they're picking up along the way so that I can sit down and have individual conversations as I did while I'm a little late, is talking with guys about individual things and decisions and things that they need to be reading in the game. So uh, I thought the first half was very clean by the group. Um, it was a different, they obviously had two different groups, a second group first and, a, and their first group uh, second. Uh, and I thought the first group, uh, first half group for us actually had a nice clean performance aside from the, you know, the goals were silly goals that we gave up. But in terms of understanding things and the fluidity of the game and possession and, and finding some good moments, that, that was there. Uh, obviously, the final pass, the final action, something that, that can be a little bit better. Um, second half, I just felt like we never actually caught the speed of the game and our decision making was too slow. Our intensity was too low. Uh, part of that is I think guys are still a little bit, they're, th they're thinking a lot while they're on the field and they're not in sort of that natural decision-making mode where, it, where when, they, when the opposition uh, rotates or does something different that we are, we're picking up on it and we're reading it at the intensity and the speed at which their first team really was. We were behind it all the time and getting dragged into bad places and, uh, and we were behind the game and we ended up chasing for most of the half. Then when we made it, when we got attacks going, uh, they had three or four guys who were kind of cheating the attacks and hanging out outside the attacks. We, we would turn over the ball or fail to finish the attack in a quality way. They would find one of those guys who's kind of cheating the defensive side, and now they're attacking us again, and the game gets very stretched out from end to end. So, um, you know, a couple different things in there. I just never thought we really got any real control of the second half, uh, and I thought they had a they had a rhythm going that we never really disrupted in in the way that we needed to. To follow up on that, did you uh, you said you you were assessing yourself? So so how did you do in this game? <laughs> well, you know, my assessment is on how how guys are understanding. I think. Uh, you know, we looked at defending a slightly different way in the second half to try to take certain things away from them. Uh, I felt like I maybe unbalanced the guys a little bit, and they were overthinking it, and they weren't uh, as as natural and fluid. And and I thought they were kind of second guessing themselves in some of the decisions. And when they get on the field, and what I've said to them, when you get on the field, you have to read what the game gives you, and you have to problem solve yourself. What we're giving them is a structure and, and a concept. But then when the opposition starts to do different rotations and different things, we've got to be able to adapt within the game as well. So I felt like we've, we struggled a little bit to adapt, and we, were, we weren't in our free-flowing thinking mind. I think we were over, kind of overthinking it and, and almost, uh, almost paralyzed, paralyzed in some ways to, in the decision-making side of things. And that led to a little bit of a lack of an intensity and never really catching the speed of it. Thanks, yeah, that sometimes happens with young guys when you give them some, you know, some new things to think about too, which is why I'm looking a little bit at myself in terms of how much maybe I gave them too much prior to this game and, and should, uh, should consider something different. But we're trying to teach at the same time we're trying to, to perform. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we will play on Saturday. We still have some players who are going to be returning and working through quarantine protocols and things like that who will be available by the time we actually get to the first game. Uh, I, have a, I have a concept in my mind of what our first 11 looks like um, as we get there. Uh, but there's still a, a week and a half left of, of seeing where guys are at physically who are joining us um, and, and kind of assessing the group as, as we get through this next three games, really. 
So uh, yeah, we have a concept on what the lineup would look like and how we would go about things, um, but we also have to make a final assessment of just, again, where guys are physically as they arrive back or arrive into our group and, and then make decisions based off of that. Fortunately, we don't start this weekend, which gives me an extra week to, to do that. Now, now um, Lizette and Arabo are already in Arizona, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And when do you expect uh, Jonathan and uh, Efren to get there? Yeah, they're there by tomorrow. Uh, if not today, actually. I know Araujo and Legette were there yesterday. Um, so, yeah, they might be in today by this evening. Um, and then we have uh, more of our guys arriving on, on Friday with us. So Vasquez and uh, Granzier should be arriving over the next uh, day. I think Vasquez tomorrow and Granzier on Friday. Do you think you will see Vasquez in action this weekend? He will have to. He will be one of the ones who has to get through quarantine protocol. But my my mathematics has me where everybody should hopefully be in by Wednesday, uh, if I'm doing the right quarantine math. So. It's new. I had to learn that this year. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Damien. Uh, we'll go next to Scott French. Scott, go ahead. Greg, uh, and what is the status? Uh, when do you expect to have Derek and, uh, and Fisher back? Uh, they'll be integrating here over this next uh, few days, actually. They're both ha are doing, uh, have been doing limited training stuff, so now it's just starting to open them up into more full training. Uh, so we hope over the course of this week that they'll be at full go and, and hopefully within the games over the next week. So. In terms of your uh, building towards the opener, how much of the work is ahead of you uh, just in the fact that you've not had these guys uh, fully together in camp? Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, it's it's even the international guys who've been gone, they, they've missed some, some critical times where I think some of our concept, concepts are starting to settle in with the guys who've been with us the whole time, and now they go and to their national teams, they see a different concept, and now they got to come back and sort of – rewrap their heads around what we're doing. Some of those things are similar to what they've encountered and some may be slightly different, but, but most of the guys are experienced players and, and have to adapt anyways. And so they, it's not like it's rocket science. They, they will, uh, they'll be able to adapt, but it's really, it's more, like I said in the past, it's more of them getting used to each other and the nuances of each other and, and reading each other and what, uh, you know, Victor no, understanding where where Javier wants the ball in certain situations. It's things like that that are nuances that guys get when they have some time together through a preseason or through a season. They start to really develop those those instincts with one another. That's those are the things that are going to have to come together quick. And uh, and then lastly, are you anticipating anybody else joining this team before the opener? Anyone who's not on roster now? Uh, it'll be a challenge uh, just because of the timing to finalize visas and then go through uh, go through the quarantine protocols. Um, but our hope is somewhere between the first day and, and hopefully the second or first game and second game we might be adding something. Uh, we'll see. We're starting to we're starting to get a little bit more into where we're at with those guys with additions in terms of announcements and additions and things like that. So we're hope hopefully we're getting close. Thank you, Greg. Yep. Thanks, Scott. We'll go next to Gio Garcia. Gio, go ahead. Hey, Greg. Uh, Gio. Just two quick questions. Um, I know you just talked about Victor Vasquez, and I know you mentioned this about Chicharito's run. How much do you think uh, that is of you guys, the players, under, like watching film of how Chicharito, where he wants the ball, and under, really understanding when he makes the runs and kind of knowing when, when to place the ball? How much do you guys really emphasize with that with the young guys? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> but with the young guys, just to kind of start at the end of your question, they are, they're managing so many different things right now on the field all at the same time, you know, from, a, from what we're asking them to do, just whether it's positional awareness, awareness of their teammates, reading the opposition, getting their body shape and the orientation right, matching the speed of, a, of an MLS level game versus a game maybe that they were playing at before, uh, getting their technical... Um, you know, getting their technique back after having been out there. Like the young guys are managing a lot of new th kind of new things all at once. So picking up the nuances of a, of a clever runner like Javier is probably down the road a little bit for them. We show them and we talk about it. And, uh, but it, in terms of the 
being able to break their attention from, from so many things and pick up the clever running of the, the second and third runs of Javier is still a little ways away, I think, for some of those guys. Whereas when you put guys like Vasquez out there, even Sasha, even guys who are already more comfortable in the surroundings and they're not adapting to so many things, they already have sort of the instincts and, and the awareness to pick up on some of those different things. That's, that's something that players get just over time as they, as they settle into the different variables within the game, right? The, these young guys are they're learning from me right now and what I want from them, and they're trying to manage the speed of the game, and they're trying to pick up Cla Javier's clever running. Like, it, these are, it's a lot of things for these guys to all at once that's coming at them. That's why they why I always say they need a little bit of time. Um, but having said that, they've done some really nice things. There's some times when things do come off and they do some, they, they've had some great moments. But um, some of that becomes a little bit, um, you know, maybe a little exposed tonight when, when they go up against uh, – a sharper first team from from uh, New England tonight, who was who was a little bit quicker and more intense and faster in terms of how they did things. And just to follow up, uh, today's game, uh, I believe Daniel Aguirre, um, yeah. he had some some impressive passes there in the first half, and yeah. it looked like he hit, he created a lot of opportunities for you guys. What did, what does this future future look like with, within the LA Galaxy organization? Yeah, I I, uh, I concur that he, he had a nice game. Again, a guy with a little bit more experience, and when he goes out on the field, you can tell he's a little bit calm. Uh, he's got a great awareness of his surroundings. I think he fits into what like our concepts of the game and our principles of the game. He just slides into them in, in a nice way, and I think he has a lot of like just maturity and confidence when he's on the field. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I like what, what he's done so far. Again, I think we have to continue to see him in the environment and, and develop and see how that comes through, whether that's through T or through uh, the second team or through uh, the first team over time. It's, it's to be determined, right? It's a preseason game, but I, I concur in that I thought he had some nice moments and he had some, uh, he had some moments where I thought he was really dictating the game in the first half in a, in a positive way. Thank you.